Let me just hold on one second right here before we meet our next thing. I, I, I want you to get comfortable. As comfortable as you possibly can because I don't really know how much time you're going to be able to sit in this hot seat because um, <laughs> King Kong's over there right now. This tournament, in addition to trying, obviously, to overtake the lead and win this thing, kind of important in this points race. Top 12 guys will make it to the postseason. Top 36 make it to the Classic. I noticed this morning you spent a lot of time getting that first fish in the boat, and it wasn't what uh, you or I would call a quality fish. A little squeaker you got in the boat first thing this morning. On a sight fishing tournament like this, why are you spending time on fish that aren't going to win the tournament for you? Yeah, what you couldn't see on tape was that... Uh that was a 14 and a quarter incher, which was paired up with one of the ones that I really wanted to catch. He was about six pounds. And I couldn't get her to bite because I was fishing there and he'd bite, she'd leave, or she'd come up to bite, and he'd nose her and make her go away. So yeah, it was killing me. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm three pounds behind King Kong, and uh, I'm playing with a 14 incher, but I know if I can get the 14 incher out of the way and get in the live well, she's gonna move up. So that, that was the reason for that. I strictly went out to win this tournament today. I wanted to do, you know, points are important. I want to make the classic play late. I mean, it's home. But uh, at the end of the day, when you're a second going out, you don't leave anything on the table. So I went out and tried to win this event. We're going to Guardsville in a couple of weeks. How do you feel about that one? Uh, it ought to be an absolute slugfest. Can't wait to see you there. Enjoy the ride. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Heron, your current leader in the Elite Series rookie season. All right. This right here is what I'm calling the Walk of Fame. Coming from all the way back in the cheap seats, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for four-time Toyota Tundra Angler of the Year, two-time Bassmaster Classic Champion out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, Bass Regalier, Kevin Van Dam. Sight fishing derby uh, primarily. We know uh, that takes patience, and you don't like sitting in one place way too long, that's for sure. It looks like you turned this into a power fishing uh, sight fishing derby. And in addition to that, you started adjusting the minute you saw that shad spawn going on. Yeah, you know, yesterday late in the day, I saw some bass uh, in small wolf, wolf packs up on these shallow points, and I've seen shad all through practice uh, in the mornings. I always look for that this time of year, and uh, I just really hadn't seen the bass around them, but I found this pack of bass yesterday and caught a couple of good ones for the, for the little shaky head worm just kind of sight casting to them out in front of them. And, uh, you know, so I decided, because I haven't been catching much uh, early in the morning, I didn't have any big fish located, so I just went out this morning and decided to target some of those areas that I'd seen some shad in. And, uh, you know, I caught them today on baits that I haven't thrown all week. You know, I, I saw the shad up there and I said, gosh, they ought to bite a top water. I tied one on and caught one. You know, I, so they ought to bite a swim bait. I tied one on and I caught one on it. So, so uh, I caught one on a wacky worm. You know, I just I did some different things today because I knew I had to adjust a little bit. And uh, you know, as I was fishing down the bank, though, I did. You know, I was constantly looking for them. I caught some on beds too. And uh, the, the big thing this week is I I spent a lot of time targeting areas that had smallmouth in it, and I ended up weighing in quite a few smallmouth. And there's a lot of nice ones in here. I, you know, they're not giants, but there's a lot of two and a half to three and a half pound smallmouth in here. And what I like about them is they're real aggressive. You know, I mean. Uh, it doesn't take long to catch them typically when they're, when they're on a bed, so, uh, you know, it's about time management. You know, I've seen so many six, seven pound large mouths today just that were in loop that didn't want to eat. And, uh, you know, I just, I just pass them up. I can tell, you know, in five or ten minutes that if I, if I can catch them, I, I don't have near the patience that a lot of these guys have. So, I just move on and, uh, and try to find something in a better mood. And uh, I work hard at it. Yeah, we'll just have to see. You know, it was uh, a much tougher day for me, though. It looked like you moved around a whole bunch. How much time did you stay in one particular area? Um, you know, all week I've been moving around a lot, and you know, typically 
you have to fish new areas every day, but what I've seen yesterday is a lot of the areas um, that the beds were empty on, new bass moved up into those same beds, and today it was unbelievable. I went to a couple areas that there wasn't a bass in yesterday, and there were six or seven beds there, and today every one of them had bass on it. The problem was is a lot of them had pears. So, you know, without a doubt, the biggest thing, um, you know, on this lake here is you got to have really good sunglasses, and I know a lot of these guys like what they wear, but I've got, I've got Oakley's, and uh, I have five different lens colors that I would kind of rotate between as the light conditions change, trying to find a pair that I could see the best with. So early in the morning, I'd use an amber lens. Up in the day, I'd use this tungsten iridium, and, and without them, you know, I, I would have not been able to catch these fish. Because so many of the bass that I caught, I'd see at a long distance. They weren't actually on a bed. They'd just be up there cruising down the bank or, or sitting up there on the sand. And if I could see them before they'd see me, a lot of times I could throw that little strike hand shaky head out in front of them uh, 15 feet or so and, and get them to bite. You know, I caught most of my biggest fish this way uh, with, that, with that technique right there. Well, for all you fantasy fishing players, uh, I've got the KBD pattern for you right here. I've kind of picked up on this over the, over the years. Uh, Wheeler, our last tournament, uh, your biggest catch was the flu. You weren't feeling too good on that one, and uh, in your mind, uh, that was not a, a, a very good tournament for you. You always seem to come back after a tournament like that and knock their lights out. How much does a performance like that motivate you into a performance like this? Well, you know what? I try to try to win every week without a doubt. I mean, all these guys are super competitive, and, and what I enjoy the most about the Bassmaster Elite Series, uh, the Elite Series, is the quality of individuals that I get to compete against. You know, I respect these guys so much. Um, they're the best in the world without a doubt, and you know, day in and day out, they're going to play and catch them. So. You know, it motivates me to try to raise my game. You know, if I, if I find that I'm a little bit weak at, at a certain technique, and you know when you are, you know. I mean, for me, a few years ago when drop shotting came out, I kind of wrote that off, and I watched uh, Aaron Martin do really good with it. I said, you know, this is something that i got to learn. And that's what these guys do is they motivate you to be better. You, you're only, uh, only going to get better if you're competing against people that can beat you. And uh, I get beat on a regular basis on this series, so, I mean, uh, you know, hopefully today I've got enough to, to win. It's going to be close, though. So. If you can beat on a semi-regular basis, let's call it what it is. Let's go ahead and invite up Matt Heron. Matt, I invite you to come read him and weep. Go ahead and grab your bag right there. Kevin Van Dam now looking for 11 pounds and 7 ounces to win his 15th tournament. Looking for 11, 7, bang, 13 pounds, 14 ounces, and King Kong climbs to the top one more time. 61 pounds and 13 ounces, and Kevin Van Dam gets it done at the Advanced Auto Parts Blue Ridge Draw. Large mount, small mount, a bona fide Kevin Van Dam party right here. 61 pounds and 13 ounces in addition to getting your 15th win and another, another 100 grand the, uh, to add to the 3.3 million you've already put in the bank. You're going to unofficially put yourself in the lead of this boy of the Tundra Angler of the Year coin trick. It's a little point right now in the season for you, Kevin. Four events to go. More to Gunners in two weeks. I know you're pretty happy with that, too. Oh, I, I love that. You know, I mean, this new format is, is really exciting. You know, it's new to all of us. Uh, the main thing is you just want to make sure that you're in that top 12. And, uh, you know, we're going to be too late when the points go back to zero. It's a lot like the NASCAR point system and, and the duration of the chase that they have. And we're going to go to two lakes that we've never been to before. And everybody's going to go back to zero. And it's going to be a two horse, you know, a two event shootout right there. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's uh, it's going to be a, a, a real exciting end of the season. And the main thing is that I just want to be a part of it. I know you do. 61 13. Let's do it right. And hand of a trophy, Trip Weldon. Win number 15 for Kevin Van Dam, ladies and gentlemen. We'll put him right here up front as KBD knocks their lights out at the Advanced Auto Park. Who wins for all? And Kevin, stay right there, my friend. Stay right up top. We got another very special presentation for you. Uh, Karen, the CEO of the Common Wealth of Virginia.